put your hand on your chest. Can you feel your heartbeat? No, I can't either. That's why you have to put your fingers there or there. <laughs> and that's Janet Porter, author of The Heartbeat Bill, who's laughing. <laughs> Janet, what's the connection between your heartbeat bill and comedy? Well, uh, the heartbeat bill, uh, as you know, is very simple. It's a bill that says if a heartbeat's detected, the baby's protected. And I guess if I was to say a connection, when we first started down that road uh, to pass a heartbeat to protect every child whose heartbeat can be heard, they told us it was impossible. Uh, and now, uh, 14 heartbeat laws later, it is inevitable. Mm. And so the same is true in the entertainment mountains. We're advancing the kingdom. We're going to end abortion. I've been saying that for some time now, and it's, it's now to the place where uh, people are believing it. And it's starting to happen now. Keep in mind that those, those laws that have been uh, held back by the courts for now, sort of like an arrow, you know, an arrow is, 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 is really, you know, held, it's pushed back before it advances. And that's what's happening. These arrows are now being launched all the way through the court system to deliver what I believe will be the fatal blow to the heart of Roe versus Wade. And so we're going to end abortion. And they said we couldn't, it couldn't be done, but we serve the God of the impossible. And so one, one day when I was, I don't know, I was having a especially bad day. Uh, our bills were being blocked in Congress. They're being blocked at the state level. And I, I don't know, I needed, I needed uh, something to cheer me up. And I would have liked to say I turned on Christian television. I got in the word. Now, I, I, watched, I watched a couple of sitcoms and I don't know, I binge watched three or four and by the third or fourth of, of the sitcoms that I watched, I, I was sick to my stomach with the agenda that came with every single one of them. And so I dusted off a script uh, and said, you know what, instead of complaining about uh, how bad things are, the sewage that's pouring into our living room every night, uh, let's do something about it. Um, and you know, many people know that I've been trying to make a movie for some time. Uh, we're gonna make that movie, but, but there's lots of good Christian movies. So I think the place to start is where it hasn't really been done, at least to not to my knowledge, and that is a Christian sitcom where we can actually advance the kingdom of God, glorify him uh, while having fun, where we can have a laugh and we don't have to be uh, indoctrinated with a godless worldview. And that's really the heart of What's a Girl to Do? It's the sitcom. It's named after one of the books I've written. Uh, it was actually a book I had to be talked into writing, uh, but it was one that, uh, that, that I wrote in 2002. It ended up being a number two in the relationship uh, category. Uh, in fact, I was doing a radio show at the time, and I almost threw a book away. You know, they send you a lot of books when you're a radio host, and I almost threw it away, and I realized, wait a minute, that's my name on the bottom. It, it was translated into Indonesian. I mean, so this book went all over the place. I met a lady in Singapore. She, I read your book, and I'm like, wow, that's, that's, that's great. Um, and, and what we can do now is, is take the stories. It's kind of like uh, the life of a pro-life, pro-family activist uh, who is going through the Mr. Wrongs uh, all the way to get to Mr. Right. Um, and you can do it without compromising. You can do it without losing heart. You can do it without losing faith. And, and that's the message. I waited a long time to, uh, to meet Mr. Right. Um, but the good news is that gave me a lot, of, a lot of, uh, of, of stories that we can now work and intertwine into the sitcom episodes. And I, I've never had so much fun doing anything um, to this point. And I've, done a, I've been in the pro-life movement. I mean, I'm just cleaning out my basement. I realized, oh my goodness, my whole life is just a campaign. I mean, we did pink slips and we did, you know, the duck campaign. We were saving a, a di duck dynasty. We just, I mean, just, I'm telling you, I've been doing this a long time, and I, I, I know that God is using everything we've been through in order to, uh, to intertwine into this. And, and, you know, we don't do everything right. We're learning in the process, and that's what we're going to find out in the sitcom episodes. Uh, I think the best part of it is the cast that we're working with. And I'll tell you, um, you're one of, and I, I know that you, you might edit this out. Don't edit this out. You are one of the most talented people I've ever met. Oh. And the fact that you would take a small role, which is about to get bigger, uh, is, is really quite, a, quite an honor that you would serve God in this way. Uh, I know he is going to bless you because you are blessing this project in ways I can't even describe. So the cast and crew are, are, are absolutely off the charts. We have Robert Davi, as you know, who's been in Die Hard and Expendables 3. He's been in The Goonies. And uh, we have uh, Rick, uh, uh, Rusty Joyner, who 
uh, plays uh, the initial love interest. He's a, a guy that I first saw in a pro-life movie called uh, Voiceless, but he's been in Melrose Place. He's been in Dodgeball with Vince Vaughn and Ben Stiller. And so it's a, it's a cast of qualified actors. I'm the least qualified actors of, actor of all of them. And I'm hoping you can give me some of the tips from your, from your acting classes, Rich. You're doing great, Janet. <laughs> You're doing great. It's so fun. And so much of it is from literally from your life. Is that is that correct? It is. It's funny. The, the, the pilot that we shot, uh, Janique uh, Stewart is, is, is one of, she's a beautiful girl. She's been on my board for, I don't know, nearly 20 years. And the, the first pilot is where we gave everybody a slip as they walked into the house. And, you know, we told them silly things to do, you know, eat off other people's plates, complain about the food, speak only in cliches, you know, skip through the house from room to room. And, and, and she told me, she goes, wait a minute, I was at that party. So these are all parties I actually had. And we're just bringing them to the screen and, and, uh, and inviting, inviting the rest of the world to, uh, to join the fun. Um, and I, I just, uh, I realized that, that I've been, I've been in the trenches. I've been in the front lines of the war for a long time. Uh, the last decade has really been devoted to getting heartbeat bills passed, uh, not only in my home state, a purple state of Ohio, uh, but, but all around the country. And, and I, I, uh, I'm just really privileged to, to be able to be a part of something like this. And I, I don't want people to think, oh, she's giving up on the cultural war farthest thing from the truth. In fact, in a week, I'll be in Dallas. We'll be talking to uh, at least 30 state leaders, legislators, uh, and we're going to be we're going to be awarding those legislators who have passed heartbeat laws and introduced them. Um, but we're going to be getting them going in, 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 in other states uh, around the country. Um, we're going to keep advancing the kingdom of God in, in multiple ways. As you know, we've been fighting the, the wicked agenda from Washington, including H.R. 5, the misnamed Equality Act. We are now yes. almost at two million orange postcards that we're sending to the Capitol. Um, and, uh, and Praise my God. Book, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting uh, emails from people every day. They're, they're reading the book. It's a training manual. It's also a, 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 a manual that lets people know that um, you can do the impossible. I mean, my home state where you're coming to film here uh, at the end of the month is, is Ohio. And you should know something about Ohio. It's the only state in the country with the motto, with God, all things are possible. I love that. And that's become a life motto. I mean, when they, again, when they said they can't pass the heartbeat bill, oh yeah, well, you don't want to know the motto of my state? Let me tell you. And we know that it's true because Jesus was the one who said it. And mm. so if we can advance in the government arena, uh, we can advance the kingdom of God in the media arena. And yes. that's, that's what we're about to do. And I, I don't want people to think, oh, you know, uh, uh, Janet's, you know, giving up and now we're just making sitcoms. What in the world is going on? We are going to see God's kingdom advance. You want to know what the, the, the mission statement, the mission statement is to reach the lost is to disciple nations and it's to glorify God. And that's what we intend to do with this. We're starting off slow. We're not going to hit everybody over the head with it right away. I mean, look what the world's done. I mean, yeah. you watch the world uh, sitcoms. I mean, you're you're viewed as an idiot if you don't sleep around. Yeah. Uh, you know, it started with a big bang. Really, that's not how I read my Bible. I mean, we read about what God has to say, and they ridicule those of us who stand for the truths of God's word. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna uh, uh, take that on head on, um, and we're gonna we're gonna present what it's like to live as a Christian in today's culture. Uh, again, we don't always do things right, but we learn along the way, and that's uh, that's really the point. Yeah, and last night in rehearsal, you know, I had mentioned that politics is downstream of culture, and you asked me to look up who that was. I haven't had the time, yeah. but, you know, a thought that came to me was that was the way Roe v. Wade was, was pushed through. I mean, we saw that in the film that came out. You know, it was that book filled with lies, filled with, with um, factual, intentional, factual error and, and really just out and out lies. You know, and what's that, funny is, 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 I didn't mean to interrupt you, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was just gonna say that that book, and that's media, right? That's going out to the public. That book was really what convinced, it was, it was cited several times in Roe v. Wade. Uh, and that was out in the popular market, so. Well, what I found out, and I, I talk with a lot of women who have experienced the, the pain of, of abortion, of losing their child, of, of being subjected to that horrendous procedure uh, that they call choice. And, I, and something stuck with me, Rich. There was a woman who, who said, the reason why I thought it was okay is I saw a sitcom mm -hmm. named, uh, the, it was the Golden Girls, I think it was called, and it was the woman who played Maud or, or, or something like this, uh, Arthur. B. Arthur, something like this. She yeah. she basically talked about how she was pro-choice, right, and killing children. 
And she said, I, that stuck with me. I saw it on television, indoctrinated in the entertainment media. And when she found, you know, she, she discovered she was pregnant. She said, well, you know, that's what I've seen on television. It must be okay. The, the, you know, the judges have ruled it legal. So who am I to question it? And yeah. so, so yeah, the media plays a very, very strong role, not only in the legalization of abortion, but whether or not, you know, how people live their lives. I mean, they learn how a family is. I mean, I, I look at things that I, I can't even watch things like modern family. I mean, it's just really, this is not, this is not God's best. We yeah. can do better than that. We can present men without being, uh, you know, this feminized version of, of the, the idiots on television. We can present police officers as people that actually do want to protect and serve. I mean, we're going to, we're going to work some of those themes in there um and we're gonna we're gonna uh, uh see some 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 transitions in characters as they as they they grow along the way some some are faking it trying to pretend like they're christians like uh, matt moore who uh, is incredibly talented actor he plays the next door neighbor uh and uh, i mean he's asked in this this upcoming episode to give a bible study on the golden rule which was a little tough to do because he didn't know what that was he <laughs> thought it was doing to others before they do it unto you um so we're, we're learning as we go and it's just it's fun along the way i've never laughed so much uh with this crew and i'll just say um the the, the first episode uh that we did the pilot that we shot the one the person who made me laugh the most to the place where i was messing up the takes and the director's mad at me it was you uh rich you're you're amazing i i just uh, the ad libs the stuff that you've thrown in that i didn't write is my favorite oh. parts of all of this and i just want to say again i'm so so grateful that uh, that you're lending your god-given talents into this uh, this project yeah, it's so much fun and here's the here's the cool thing about all of this is my wife's a, a counselor and she said, when you laugh, there's something about laughter that opens you up. You know, our, we've got this frontal lobe and our analytical upper left brain is like blocking everything we don't agree with. But when we start laughing, you're taking things in at the, the limbic system level right into your core being. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's, I mean, that's how they've changed the culture. Yes. The, the Marxists did this in the 30s very very intentionally and now we're trying to to mount the mountain of the entertainment industry and we've we've got a lot of opposition you know there's there's a lot of people who complain about what they see I mean, for years, mm -hmm. I, I mean, how many emails have gone out about this, this trash on this show and this, this agenda and how they're ridiculing, you know, God in this, in this program. And, and, you know, we always send the boycotts and we'd make the calls and we do all this, but, but it, there comes a time where you got to quit complaining about what's wrong and, and actually create something that's right. Um, and, and, you know, that's the same with abortion. I, I, I honestly, I got to the point where I am sick of talking about abortion. I'm sick of marching about it. I'm sick of protesting it. I'm sick of it entirely. I want it to end. And so when God gave me the idea for the heartbeat bill and they said it couldn't be done, I just kept going because when you know that God puts something on your heart, you know that he finishes what he starts. I mean, I, I didn't know it was going to take so long. I didn't know it was going to be that hard. It took us a decade to get it through in my home state of Ohio. But, but when the purple state of Ohio passed it, that allowed me to go to South Carolina and to Texas and North Carolina and to Tennessee and say, look, if the purple state of Ohio can pass a heartbeat bill, then certainly, I told this to the legislatures in, in, legislature in, uh, in Texas, certainly the great state of Texas can do it. And I'll tell you, if they were almost embarrassed that they haven't done it before us, I mean, you, you know, you're what, number 14? Come on. They were, uh, you know, and we're seeing legislators I, I met with, and I'll be meeting with next week uh, uh, from a lab. Alaska, from uh, from all over the country, we're going to see uh, more laws to keep hearts beating, and it's exciting. Um, and I just want people again to know, I'm not giving up that front. That is my heart. That is my priority. But this is something that will advance the kingdom. And as you say, it's upstream from yeah. politics, because if we can turn the hearts, if we can reach the lost, and if we can disciple nations, um, then then we can we can get our country back. You know, we're very good at, at, at very often of winning converts. You know, you, 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 you say the prayer and you move on. Well, we're, we're actually told to disciple nations. Amen. Um, I made a, a movie, a documentary called uh, Light Winds. Because mm. in the battle between darkness and light, light wins, right? That's mm -hmm. the message. And, yeah. and I remember uh, as, we, as we talked about uh, one of the things Dutch Sheets said in, that, in that, uh, that, that, that movie, that documentary we made, 
He said, you know what? The world has 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 really taken the Great Commission uh, on, turned it on its head, where, where we disciple individuals, maybe, mm. and we win converts, but they actually disciple nations. Mm. They do it through the music, through the entertainment. They do it through, yes. through the culture, through yep. the science, the fake science, the fake news. They're doing it all around us, and they're undermining the truth of the Word of God, and people are dying lost because uh, we have not challenged the lies in the entertainment culture in particular. And, and that's that's really one of the things I wanna do. And and, and again, um, people say, oh, you know, you 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 like doing things that have, haven't been done. Well, I see that there is a screaming void um, and why not uh, why not use what God's given us to fill it? Uh, whether it's it's we passed the nation's first ban on partial birth abortion. We we got the heartbeat bill off the ground. Um, and now the momentum is, is carrying that thing uh, beyond what what I can do to keep it going, which is amazing. Um, but but as far as I know, there's again, lots of good Christian movies. I've seen most of them, but but I've not seen a Christian sitcom of this kind. And that's what's new. It's new. Um, and I believe it's going to pave the way for many others to follow. I, I pray that it will. You know, here's something that also that I've been just thinking about is before we had media, information was disseminated through the church. Yes, right. That's how people heard the news is it would it would be the announcements. Well, it would and, be the evening news after your church service. Well, you know, that's the whole, the whole, how America got started. It was the Black yeah. Robe Regiment, remember? They, oh, yeah. were, you know, the, the shot heard around the world was in the, in the parking lot of the, of the, of the church there uh, with uh, Jonas Clark. I remember I, I worked for Dr. D. James Kennedy. I learned a lot of the American history that way. I'm friends with David Barton and Bill Federer. We learned a lot about, about how this whole thing started. And we have, we've pretty much walked away from from our role we did it in, in in hollywood where we used to be the ones that oversaw the scripts and made sure that 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 they were wholesome and they were uplifting and that they were godly and then we just walked away um and we walked away in so many fronts but we're walking back in and we're we're rushing back in we're running to the front lines of this battle and and, and unlike most everything else i've done i had a lot of fun with a lot of projects we've done but but nothing like this where we can actually advance the kingdom of god while having fun and i I've never, I've never been a part of anything quite like this. I, I've never been a part of something that was this important, that was this fun. Um, and, and that's what's exciting to me. And I think that, that the people will watching, the people who are watching it will have fun uh, as well. And Janet, how can we pray for you? Who well, um, one way is is we need uh, we need God to uh, to work through people's hearts. God works through people, um, and and uh, that, that they believe in this project to be a part of the groundbreaking, that to, to be a a a a part of the the, the head of the spear really. Uh, to say we're going to break through this entertainment uh, market and uh, and and advance the kingdom of God with the modem that the world has used but that we have we've have not we've abandoned and so I would just encourage uh, people to pray that that, that that we get the funding we need to keep going we're, we're gonna by the end of uh, next month we will have uh, four episodes uh, complete uh, we've got 17 written uh, so so we pray for the writing we pray that it's excellent we pray for the humor but we pray for the funds and for the distribution. Um, and so we've got a crowdfunder going on give, send, go, G I V E, send, go.com. You just type in Christian sitcom. We're the only one. Uh, it'll come up and you can, uh, you can play a role in that. And we're just very grateful that uh, so many are, are coming in as volunteers and, and uh, being a part of even just building the set and, 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 you know, doing the behind the scenes, all the technical work uh, and, and the acting as well. It's just, it's amazing. And, and I know God is in this. I can tell you many stories, but I I believe we're going to see a lot more to come. Awesome. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you so much for the visions that you have given Janet, Lord, to, um, to this idea of the heartbeat. If you can hear a heartbeat, the person is alive. Lord, that's just such a simple concept, but this is saving lives now in 14 states. And I just pray that it would get to all 50 eventually, that this would be a nation that will not allow children to be killed in the womb. And Father, now you've put this new vision on Janet's heart and mind, and, and I just pray, Father, that this would go like gangbusters. Hear her, her heart's call for people to partner with her to, to help make this a reality, the same way that the chosen is riding on the, the, the small contributions of so many, many people. Lord, we pray for that kind of 
a grassroots movement to get behind this sitcom and, and get it going. We pray for the distribution. We pray even now for the people who are going to be watching it, mm -hmm. that you will turn their hearts by increments, by laughter, back to you. Turn their hearts back to you. May it be cool. May this sitcom make it cool to be a Christian again. And I just pray, Father, I just want to pray, even as people are considering giving, Lord, that they would see that this is not just about writing a check or, or putting their credit card online. This is about partnering in prayer as well. And I, I'm thinking of my friends who, who raise funds for InterVarsity. And my friend told me that this is so much more than money coming in. This is relationships developing and prayer going forward. And so, Lord, I just pray that Janet would sense that support as she steers this ship and moves this into the mainstream culture. We pray for it, Father. We pray that this would get picked up in some place, that, that people would hear about this and demand it, that there would be a demand for this sitcom, mm -hmm. and that, Lord, you would use it for your kingdom's glory to uh, transform the mountain the, the influential mountain of media for your kingdom's glory, that it would be inspiring others to tell stories that draw people to you. And we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Blessings, Janet. Back at you. God bless you.